Welcome to the Solid Cam University channel. This video's topic is pockets versus pocket recognition. So in Solid Cam, we actually have multiple ways to do pocketing, uh, different operations for pocketing. Uh, in this video, I want to focus on just the pocketing toolpath and the pocket recognition toolpath. And right off the bat, uh, the main difference is one is just an individual pocket strategy, and the other one is more of a recognition strategy. Uh, recognition as in you can select the solid and it'll uh, find all the prismatic features on that part, all the pockets, the cavities, bosses, that sort of thing. So right away, that's the main difference between the two. One has the, the name recognition. That's essentially what it's pointing at. Uh, but in the finer details, let's go through that real quick. Um, so if I were to open up a pocketing toolpath, basically you'll see uh, the, the same sort of stuff you're familiar with here. You'll just go to new geometry. And in the geometry section, what we're looking for is either the contour of a part of a pocket so let's say we just do this open pocket here i'll grab that contour there i can click on my constant z and finds the rest of the pocket for me uh, i can also use smart face which means that if i click on a face it recognizes the edges of that face for me it also recognizes that those are open edges as well that's how the smart face works if I were looking for some other details on this on this face here or i want to choose multiple pockets in this pocketing operation i can go to multi-chain I can click on my type. Let's say we do faces. With my loop uh, filter turned on, I can say find all the faces, let's say on this face here. We can do all the internal, all the external loops. Essentially, external is the outside, internal is all these inside guys. If I click on that face there, click on the green check mark, that also will convert those into edges for me. Now, the thing is, that is not using smart face. So I'd have to go in there and tell it all those individual open edges if I do that kind of mass selection. Or I could just use SmartFace and then find all those edges for me, find the open edges and all that using SmartFace. So pretty simple. Uh, using a simple tool, levels. If I had multiple faces, I actually can go into variable level and actually give it individual upper levels and lower levels. And I actually have a better example here of the, of the toolpath that I actually created already. So what I've done here is I've used that uh, multi-selection. So I just chose smart face of all those pockets that you see there. You can actually turn on 3D protection against the target inside of the uh, regular standard pocketing toolpath. Under levels, I actually gave it a maximum step down for all the pockets and I've given them individual faces. Now I told them to start from the same upper level, but I could actually give them all their own upper levels as well. So this is, still the standard pocketing toolpath, but you can tailor it to individual pockets. You give it an individual strategy for each pocket. Even, even uh, more so than that is if we go back to the geometry section, I can actually extend it past those open edges or at certain chains for those individual pockets. So again, it's still an individual pocketing strategy, but in one toolpath, I can do multiple pockets. Under technology, very similar to what uh, you would have seen in the training video for pocketing. If we go to advanced, there's a wall draft, wall draft angle that we're able to do before. And pretty much that is simple pocketing. There's not much else here uh, uh, other than maybe when you do your uh, geometry selection. Uh, it doesn't come up a lot, but you do have the ability to do configurations. But that's basically the same for many toolpaths inside socket. Now, that is pocketing. If you did an individual pocket or a group of pockets, Pretty much pocketing is probably what you want to do, individual light levels and all that. But let's say you had to do the entire part. You're looking for a kind of a all-in-one kind of strategy. The pocket recognition toolpath actually allows you to choose as your geometry faces as well, but it actually has this solid body definition here. So you can actually just click on the solid and it'll find all the faces for you. So you can see it parses the model and finds all the faces even through pockets, if I turned on the through pockets, if it had any through pockets on this part. Um, now, it actually does, it has those holes, but you can see that I actually applied the circular pocket diameter filter. Let me just go back in there. So that actually eliminates those pockets for me recognized as well, because those are smaller than the diameter that I put in there. Or for instance, as you see on this part, it has some colored faces. I can turn on a color recognition and let's say I pick from the model, whatever color that is. So now I've defined it. Good to find it there as well. 
And let's say we've got that color turned on. Now I'll just click on that face there. I'm actually clicking on the solid, but by putting on the color filter, it found only those faces, the ones that have the color on there. So that is the one main difference between uh, the geometry selection in pocket recognition and pocketing. In pocketing, I could still click faces, but I'm really just finding the edges of that face, whether they're open or closed. In pocket recognition, I'm recognizing the faces from a solid, or I can give it a color filter, uh, and I can also give it a diameter filter for circular pockets. So there's differences in the geometry selection, but think of it more like in pocket recognition, you're choosing a body, a solid, and all the faces off that solid, or in pocket, you individually choose the faces. Let's say we go with what I've already selected there, which is basically those same faces that we saw when we did the pocketing. You can still choose the same tool. Under levels, you have a common upper level, because remember, this is more for uh, the entire solid. So it's looking at it as if we wanna do all the pockets on this, on this entire solid. Um, the levels, you actually can give it either no level, so meaning that it'll just look at the entire solid, or we can limit the travel by just saying only look at this solid between the upper level and that lower level there. But what you're doing here is you're basically just telling it to analyze the solid between those two Z levels to find all the pockets there. You're not giving the pockets the individual levels. The recognition will do that for you. All we're really doing here is giving it that max step down and giving it an adaptive step down as well. This is a feature that we've seen on the turning side of things where basically if your maximum step down uh, is too large for some of the finer features, finer levels on this part, it'll just add an additional pass to clean up that face. So that's basically just adaptive step down. It'll make sure to clean all the faces that we selected. In technology, it is exactly the same. This is still a pocketing strategy. So you still have the ability to do contour, hatch. Uh, you can't do plunging pattern like you would in pocketing, but you're uh, probably not doing that with pocket recognition anyway. But everything else in here is offsets, what to do if there's an open pocket, how to control your contour if you use contour. The only thing you don't have here is the wall draft angle strategy because again, this is doing all the pockets together. So there's probably not really um, um, a way to do the wall draft for all the pockets together. If you're gonna do wall draft angle on a pocket or a cavity, might as well just use the standard pocketing. So how does that actually look? Since we're doing the same geometries, those same four red faces on this side here between the two, um, it really highlights the main difference between the two. So if I show you the pocketing toolpath, I've done those four faces and they're doing them individually. You can see that we have individual lead and lead out, individual entries, and it's looking at them with different levels as well. So it's actually applying the upper level, lower level from that upper level um, through all of them the same. But I wanna highlight what's going on over here. So these two pockets are very close. It looked at this one as one pocket. It looked at this one as another pocket and if this is gonna collide, I could have turned on my pocket recognition, uh, sorry, my target recognition, but it, um, it would have done them as an individual pockets. But if we go to pocket recognition, the same four faces are selected, but you'll notice that it looks at it as one unified strategy. So it actually is doing each level, you can see that it's doing a little bit there, and it's assuming that it has to clear all that material. So there's a lot more travel going on here because it's thinking of it as one continuous toolpath. So it's doing the same sort of pocketing strategy, it's just doing it from down there. Now, pocket recognition on an individual pocket, or even just these few pockets like this, it's a little, I'm not gonna say overkill, but you can see that it's doing a lot more movements for those, for those different pockets. So really, the rule of thumb I would use for when to use pocket versus when to use pocket recognition is if you have many pockets you'd like to do as one unified strategy, almost like you're looking for a 3D toolpath, but you're just looking at it, doing it prismatically, use pocket recognition. If you have a bunch of separate pockets with different levels, or even just a shared upper level or a shared lower level, um, then just use pocket. Pocket gives you a lot of the functionality that you would get with, um, with pocket recognition, but you get a lot more control of the, of the individual details of the pockets, things like extending on the outside. And if you go to levels, even though you're using uh, multi-level, you can actually right click here and set all the pockets to the same thing. So if we needed to set them all to be up by, by the stock or by the target, you can set all updated stock. You have the ability here to just set all of them in one go. So there is fine details between pocket and pocket recognition, but for me, I would say 
if you're looking at individual separate non-connected pockets versus one set strategy for the whole thing. Um, so that basically would be the rule of thumb for pocket versus pocket recognition. Any questions on this or anything else from SolidCamp, just give us a call at 1-866-975-1115, extension 2. You can send us your parts, your questions via the ticket system at solidcampsupport.com. And stay tuned for the rest of the videos on this YouTube channel. Thanks for watching.